Hi everyone, I am Karanjit Das of Brunel University London and in this video I will talk to you about the components of the innate immune system. Firstly, I would like to thank Dr. Jogan Chandra Kalita of Kwat University for giving me this opportunity to present in front of a greater audience. In this video, we will learn about the different components of the innate immune system. The learning outcomes of this video are as follows. The first learning outcome is what is innate immune system? The second learning outcome is what are its different components and the third learning outcome is why innate immunity is essential or important. Now let's understand about innate immunity. The innate immune system is the first line of defense in the body and it evolutionarily predates adaptive immunity. The innate immune system is generally for the protection of the body against any pathogen or any virus. So what are the different components of the innate immune system? The different components of innate immune system are as follows. Physical barriers, anatomical barriers, serum proteins, phagocytes, antimicrobial peptides, cell receptors, and cytokine and inflammatory mediators. Now let us learn about the physical and anatomical barriers. Physical barriers include skin, while epithelial and mucosal barriers generally include lining of the gut. As we all know about the current pandemic situation caused by COVID-19, it is generally advised to wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. This is because the virus cannot penetrate your skin unless there is an injury or a cut. Lysosomes are generally found in tears and they are mainly antimicrobial in action. Now let's go to the next slide and talk about serum proteins. Serum proteins include complement proteins, C-reactive proteins, MBL and phycolins. The complement proteins forms the complement system which we will talk about a bit later. Now let's talk about C-reactive proteins and phycolins. C-reactive proteins are normally pattern recognition receptors which are also termed as PRR and they bind to phosphocholine of bacterial surface. Binding of phosphocholine on bacterial surfaces causes apoptosis and this leads to the activation of the complement system and finally apoptosis. Phycolins are pattern recognition receptors and they mainly activate the lactin pathway of the complement system. Now let us learn about the complement system. The complement system is mainly formed of complement proteins. These are mostly produced in the liver and they can work in a cascade of events which ultimately leads to formation of the MAC complex. So the complement system is activated via three pathways, classical, alternative and lactin pathways. Now let us learn about these three pathways in details. So by now we have learned that three pathways can activate the complement system. Now let us learn how classical pathway actually works. The classical pathway is activated when C1 cube binds to the antibody and antigen complex. So C1 cube is also a complement protein and binding of C1Q initiates a cascade of events which ultimately leads to the formation of C3 convertase which you can see in the screen and will ultimately lead to the formation of the terminal complex that is the MAC complex. So MAC complex ultimately clears the target pathogen by causing cell lysis. So how the MAC com uh, complex is formed let's understand now. So C1Q which is another component protein binds to the antigen antibody complex and it will cause breaking of C2 and C4 into C2A and C2B and again C4A and C4B respectively. So C2A and C4B will come together and form this C3 convertase and C3 convertase will further be hydrolyzed and it will be broken down into C3B and C3A. So C3B will go in and ultimately cleave C5 protein. C5 is also a complement protein and C5B will go and bind to the surface of a pathogen and it will recruit C6, C7, C8, C9 which are another complement proteins and together they will form a complex known as membrane attack complex or MAC complex. This will create a hole in the surface of the target pathogen and it will cause apoptosis via cell lysis. So now let's learn about the alternative pathway. The alternative pathway is activated independently without the pathogen binding protein via C3 spontaneous hydrolysis leading to the formation of C3 convertase which is C3 
BBB. These events will lead to finally the formation of terminal MAC complex and clearance of target pathogen or altered self molecules. While the lectin pathway is activated via MVL, which is also a collectin, which we'll talk about late, later. MVL is similar to C1Q and it normally binds to two complexes, MASP1 and MASP2. So binding of MBL to the surface of pathogen causes activation of MSP1 and MSP2, which cleaves C4 and C2 and leads to the formation of uh, C3 convertase, which is kind of similar to the classical pathway. Now let's go to the next slide and learn about phagocytes. So phagocytosis is the phenomenon where a target cell or pathogen is engulfed by cells, which are also termed as phagocytes. The FC receptors or C receptors present in neutrophils generally help in activation of uh, complement mediated phagocytosis. So neutrophils have FC or complement receptors. They normally causes phagocytosis via the complement pathway. While monocytes and macrophages migrate to inflammatory sites and, and monocytes also have the capacity to transform into macrophages. They are mainly phagocytotic and uh, antimicrobial in action. They also help in antigen presentation. Now let's go to the next slide and talk about cytokines and inflammatory mediators. So there are three types of cytokine and inflammatory mediators, natural killer cells, macrophages, and mast cells. So cytokines are substances secreted by various immune cells that may influence the function of other cells. There are three major producers of cytokines, and these are NK cells, mast cells, and macrophages. NK cells play a role in uh, immunomodulatory role and they can initiate the innate immune system and uh, they can also influence the activity of other immune components by cytokine expression. While mast cells are mainly present in the connective tissue and they also have toll-like receptors which we'll talk about later present in their surface and they can get activated in the presence of pathogens. After activation mast cells release inflammatory mediators that helps to eliminate the pathogen. So they release TNF-alpha, IL-1 beta, and also they can release antimicrobial peptides. Now let's learn about antimicrobial peptides. So antimicrobial peptides are host defense peptides and are very potent antibiotics. And they have been proven to kill gram-negative as well as gram-positive bacteria, enveloped viruses, and also altered cell molecules. These are mainly antibiotics and have immunomodulatory function. They also have the ability to enhance the innate immune system. So there are three types of antimicrobial peptides. These are defensins, catalysis. Now let us understand about pattern recognition receptors. So pattern recognition receptors or PRR are proteins that mainly recognizes patterns that are present on pathogens or altered cell molecules. They are capable of recognizing pathogen associated molecular patterns or PAMs and danger associated molecular patterns or DAMs, which we'll talk about a bit later. There are different types of pattern recognition receptors or PRR. So the first one is toll like receptors or TLR, nod like receptor NLR, retionic acid inducible gene rig like receptor, and C type lectin receptor or CLR. We all use smartphones. And our smartphone uses fingerprint sensors to unlock, right? So pattern recognition receptors are similar as fingerprint sensors, and they recognize oligosaccharide patterns to recognize specific pathogen or altered cell molecule. So this is how a pattern recognition receptor works and gets activated. Now let's learn about TLR or toll-like receptors. There are mainly 10 TLRs present in humans. TLR1, 2, 4, 5, and 6 are present on cell surface, while TLR3, 7, 8, 9, and 10 are present on the cytoplasm. They are mainly composed of leucine rich repeat or LRR domains. They also have a cytoplasmic domain known as Toll Interleukin 1 receptor or TIR. TIR generally binds to its ligand and gets activated. So now let's understand about nod like receptors. Nodlike like receptors or NLRs are intercellular pattern recognition receptors. They are also regulators of different immune responses. Interferon gamma and TNF-alpha normally regulates node expression. So 
Polymorphism in the NOT2 gene can also cause Crohn's disease, which is inflammation in the intestine. Now let's learn about CLR. So CLRs are divided into two groups, collectins and pentraxins. So collectins are similar to collagen and they can recognize carbohydrate structures on a target pathogen or older cell molecule. They can act as opsonins and induce lysis of target cells. They include MBL, which we already talked about, and surfactant proteins, which are mainly secreted in lungs, and phycolin 1, 2, and 3, which we all talked earlier. Pentraxins, now this group includes C reactive protein, serum amyloid P components, and pentraxin 3, or also known as PTX3. Macrophages and dendritic cells mainly secrete these immune molecules. Rig like receptors are mainly formed of two N terminal caspase recruitment domains or CARD domain and a RNA helicase domain. They mainly induce secretion of antiviral cytokines such as interferons and mainly modulates antiviral immune response. Now let's understand about PAMPs. PAMPs or pathogen associated molecular patterns are mainly molecular signatures recognized by pattern recognition receptors. They are polysaccharide and polynucleotide in nature. They are mainly recognized by PRRs. PAMPs include LPS, lipotechoic acid, bacterial flagellin, peptidoglycan, single-stranded RNA, and as well as double-stranded RNA from viruses. So what is inflammation? So inflammation is generally occurs at a site of injury. The injury can be physical or chemical in nature. So which is also characterized by vascular permeability and recruitment of leukocyte and plasma proteins at the site of injury or phagocytes at the site of injury. The plasma proteins also serve as an important role in innate immune response by transporting substances like minerals, proteins and other essential vitamins to help during inflammation. The main function of leukocytes during infection is to eliminate pathogens or infections. These are mainly white blood cells and they mainly eliminate target pathogen or cells via phagocytosis. Now let's discuss what we have learned so far. So from this video we have understood that the innate immune response is very potent and it is very essential for our immune system. It is very rapid and it is mainly involved in the protection of our body. The innate immune response also serves for immune surveillance to recognize any pathogen or infection occurring in our, inside our body. It is essential for immune modulation and also immune tolerization because Immune tolerization during pregnancy is very essential. If, if immune tolerization against paternal antigen doesn't occur, it can lead to complications in pregnancy. So this makes innate immune response very important and it is very essential to maintain the innate immune system. Now let's go to the next slide and here I have attached all the references and you can go to them and do further reading. I think it will be very beneficial. So I would like to conclude this video by thanking you all that are watching this video and I would also like to thank Dr. Jessica Kalita once more for giving me this opportunity to present in front of a greater audience. Please feel free to contact me or Dr. Kalita if you have any queries. I have added my email address. Feel free to contact me if it's necessary. Thank you.